Hey ladies and gents, welcome back to DCS. So here we are in the cockpit of the SG-25A on the Rebel Strike Mission 2. So if you haven't watched the uh, Mission 1, the previous video, I recommend you guys go and watch it to get the background story for this mission. Now I have designed this mission myself and let's get Mission 2 started. So Mission 2 is going to be a strike mission, meaning that instead of the first mission, which was a cast mission, we were on call f to provide casts. On this mission, we're striking a specific target, which I'll explain later. So, here's me and there's my wingman over there. Now, I'm just, uh, I'm having some problems with my uh, Warthog uh, throttle. Some of the buttons don't work uh, unless you move the throttle itself. Well, I'm just checking the air brakes, making sure that my, my air brakes uh, button works. I'm not sure if you guys have the same problem. Let me know if you do and if there's a uh, fix for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and set up uh, my uh, my bomb uh, ripple quantity as well as the uh, ripple intervals. I'm going to set it to both so both bombs come off and I'm setting the uh, ripple quantity now to point uh, four seconds of uh, delay per, per pulse. Um, everything else is ready. Everything else is all good. Now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, set the QFE for the uh, for the airfield, basically the altitude of the airfield, zeroing it in, so that uh, we are kind of uh, um, aware of where the actual ground is. So let's go ahead and zero that out to 653.5. There we go. Perfect. Now let's get this jet going. Let's salute the uh, crew chief as always, and we can begin. Our taxi to the runway, giving the uh, brakes a check, and let's get going. Okay, so here we are on the uh, takeoff roll. Now, the SG 25A, uh, you take off without flaps. So, we're gonna give it full power, and we're uh, rumbling down the runway, and at 200. 50 260 kilometers an hour. I'm just going to slightly pull back on the stick and we should uh, depart at uh, around 300 kilometers an hour There we go Pulling back There we go now I want you guys, I'm, I'm just gonna try and explain something to you guys for those of you who are new to DCS I'm gonna explain a couple of uh, basic concepts. So I want you guys to have a look at that uh, Copy. I want you guys to have a look at this gauge right here with the uh, red stripe markers. And I want you to have that's our AOA indicator. That's our angle of attack indicator. All right. Transmission coming in from command. Radio silence until further notice. Copy that. Uh, so I want you guys to have a look at that AOA indicator. Now, even though we have su sufficient sp speed in the uh, SU-25A, our angle of attack is still high. It's heading towards that uh, red bit. Roger. Uh, so it's heading towards that uh, red bit, meaning that our AOA is getting a bit too high. We're in the yellow section now, uh, even though we're at 400 kilometers an hour. Now that's because we are carrying too much weight on the aircraft on the AC-25. Now when you carry weight on your aircraft, that changes your center of gravity in relation to where the aerodynamic point of lift is on the aircraft. So even though you might have sufficient speed, which was good in another mission or another loadout, it will not be. So if I go ahead and pull the stick now, you can see that our AOA goes into the red zone. And if we continue in there, there's a possibility that our aircraft could stall. So that's just one point that I, wanna, uh, wanted, I wanted to um, get across to you guys who might be new to DCS, and I know there's a lot of new players in DCS because of the uh, the free fly events and the discounts and so on and so forth, and and some of you new virtual DCS pilots uh, could benefit from these uh, tips from from uh, players who have uh, played uh, before. So you can see that our our AOA is dropping below 10 degrees as our speed increases and our um, and I let out the stick basically. So we're going to go ahead and uh, head towards the IP. Hopefully my wingman can catch up. And I'll see you guys uh, 
at the IP or uh, I'll see you guys if something interesting happens. Okay guys, so lesson number two for those of you who are uh, beginner DCS virtual pilots. So this lesson is about trim. So you want to learn how to trim an aircraft so that it will make your life a lot easier. Now, I don't recommend flying with trim only. A lot of people, a lot of pilots in real life and in, in virtual world just tend to fly using the trim hat. So I want to go ahead and level off at 4,000 meters. But as soon as I pull back the throttle, okay, and I uh, unload the stick, the nose of the aircraft ten tends to drop. I don't want that. I want to maintain the level flight at 4,000. So in order to do that, I'm going to first set my power, okay? And then when I'm happy with that power state, then I'm going to trim for that specific power state. If you're constantly moving the throttles, you're going to have to retrim. So set the power first, then trim. Now you can see I'm slightly nose down on the vertical velocity indicator, which is the only thing that I trust. I don't trust the uh, artificial uh, horizon or the, um, the aircraft datum that's in that uh, attitude indicator in the SG-25. I only trust the vertical velocity indicator. And you, can, you guys can see that I'm slightly nose down. Now I can go ahead and trim nose up, but I'm not going to do that. So once I pass this cloud, I'm just going to give it a slight bit of throttle, and you guys can see that vertical velocity indicator comes up to zero, which is where we want to be. We want to be uh, level flight. So just slight amount of power, and you can see there we go. We've come up to a uh, nose level attitude without trim. Okay guys, welcome back. So here we are, we're at the IP, now we switched over to the strike point, which is over there, 25 to 30 kilometers away, somewhere in the vicinity of the city. Now we're striking a, uh, a rebel insurgent column, armored column, that's, that's intending to attack friendly forces uh, that are held up, pretty much. So I'm going to go, go ahead and tell my wingman to go... Uh, uh, to trail. He's lined abreast. I'm gonna go him to go to trail. Basically, to take up a position behind me. And he says, copy. Off he goes. There we go. We don't want to be too close when we're on a uh, ground strike mission in case we get hit or in case we bump into each other. We don't want to hold close formation. I want him to go uh, line abreast. Now, down there at the uh, on the compass, you guys can see that I'm kind of pointing away from the target, from that uh, strike point. We're 24 kilometers out. So I want the target, if I can zoom in, you guys can have a look. I want the target, target area, to be offset from my nose, basically towards my 10 to 11 o'clock, as you can see right there. I don't want to face the target straight on because then I won't be able to uh, see the target. I want to, I want to see the target right here. And at the moment, I, I have no idea where they are. Even though I designed the mission, I still don't know exactly where they are. I still haven't picked them up. So you want to you wanna keep the target at your 10, 10 o'clock or the 2 o'clock so you can see them. And you can have a good, uh, good setup to employ your weapons. Now, it's also important to think about which weapons you want to employ. Now, the first weapons that I'm going to drop are two uh, FAB 500s. I'm still scanning for targets. I'm still looking for that uh, rebel column, uh, but I, I still can't see them. Way too far out. Uh, so I'm going to be dropping the two bombs, the two uh, FAB 500 bombs, which are uh, pretty much 1,100 pounds equivalent. So I want to drop both of them with a 0.4 second delay. Now because I know that I'm dropping bombs, and I think, there we go, I think I have eyes on the target column right now. I have to get closer. But anyway, because I know I'm going to be dropping bombs, which means that I need to dive on the target, so I'm already preparing my aircraft. I'm already uh, slowing down, as you guys can see. My AOA is going up, which means that I'm slowing down. So I'm sort of setting up myself for what I wanted to do. You don't just roll in willy-nilly, not knowing what you want to do, what which weapons you want to drop. Now, there are a variety of threats down there. It could be AAA, it could be man pads, it could be anything. Having one last look, there we go, picked up the column, they're on the road, right before that bend. 
I'm gonna go ahead and target the, uh, just the front section of the column to stop them from attacking the friendly forces, which are all the way to the front, right by the, uh, mountain. There's a, uh, there's a, uh, barracks complex there. So those are the, uh, bombs, and there you go. The, uh, air brakes are out. Throttle in. Rolling in. Now, why do we roll in? We roll in so that we don't put any negative Gs on the aircraft. Or yourself as the pilot. Negative Gs hurt. And negative Gs can have adverse effects on many, uh, jet engines. So, laser is on now. There we go. We're getting ranging information to the gun sight. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and target, as I said, the front of the column. Just getting in there. There we go. Setting it up. As soon as we have the, uh, red attack light, we're gonna hold down the P.E.K.K.A. button. Being locked. There we go. Pickle. Pickle both bombs. Alright, we gotta pull out. Air breaks in. Okay. Dumping flare. Okay, good, good, good hits. Good hits. Hit exactly where I want it, just in front of the column. Just uh, pumping out flares just in case there's a man pad. In the previous episode, if you guys watched, uh, we lost an SU-24 to a uh, surface-to-air uh, shoulder-launched man pad. Okay, I'm gonna try and uh, climb back up and try and reacquire the targets. Now they've scattered all around, and I, I can tell you, I, I'm not able to see any of them. No visuals, no joy. So I want to go ahead and get my wingman into the fight as well. Uh, that that column, if you wanted to, if you wanted to damage it significantly, we want uh, both of us employing our weapons. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and contact my wingman to get him involved to attack some of the ground targets. Now, sometimes the AI inside DCS just refuses to attack anything. So let's just go ahead and say engage ground targets. Good. Okay. Right, he's gonna go after air defenses. Well, it's, that's just, it's a start for the AI. So I've got to reacquire the targets now, and I've got to set up uh, my rockets. So I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, my uh, heat rockets, the 80 millimeter heat rockets, the ones that are inboard. So we're going to go ahead and set that one up. And I've got to, as I said, reacquire the targets. Now that's the one, number one problem. Okay, missile away. Yep, he hit something. Nice work, dude. Good work, man. He just hit something. Nice. Oh, he's hit. He's hit again. That's not good. <laughs> but he, he killed something. I, I, I saw him hit something. Now, I still have no visuals. Like, I'm not sure if, if those are trees or actual vehicles. I'm gonna pull out. Nope. No need to continue on this uh, on this attack run with uh, with no visuals. I'm just gonna dump flare. There's AAA coming up. There's no. There's, there's not a good thing to continue on this attack uh, path if you have no visuals on anybody. So I'm gonna go around. And I'm gonna try and uh, re-attack. Hopefully my uh, wingman is alright. We need to get some altitude. We need about 25 to 30 degree dive for the rockets. For the dumb fire uh, folding fin rockets. Now, as I was saying, this is the problem with these 1980s jets. Where you have absolutely no way, no visual aid in acquiring the target. 
Like, I'm looking down there, but I can hardly see anything. I'm, I'm seeing two, two dots in the field. Those could be trees. It could be a shed. But I think those are tanks. Or APCs. So I'm just gonna roll in. Hopefully they are. Now, this is not a cast mission. This is not a close air support mission. There are no friendlies in these areas. So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll in. There we go. Triple, triple A coming up. Alright. There we go. That's it. There we go. Oh, we got hit. That was a hit. That was a hit from the AAA. Okay, uh, those things that we fired on... I don't see them burning. Hopefully, uh, I can edit this out and you guys can see what I hit. <laughs> because I, I, I couldn't identify what I hit. They could have been trees, I'm not sure. So let's just egress, climb back up, and get in a position to re-attack. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what happened to my wingman. I'm looking for my wingman, but I don't see him. He might be, uh, he might be shot down. But, uh, anyway, the mission has to go on, uh, regardless of what happened to our wingman. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, re-attack again. Now, this is not the right thing to do. It's, you, you don't want to attack from the same, same heading, same altitude, same th sort of, uh, thing over and over again. Because it makes it a lot easier for the enemy to, uh to hit you, basically, for the enemy AAA gunners to uh, fixate and to expect where you're going to be coming from. So you want to be uh, unpredictable as much as you can. Now, those things down there, they could be vehicles. The two that I just hit before, they're not on fire, so I'm not sure. But that's the problem with these 1980s jets, is the uh, acquiring a target visually. SG-25 is not a bad ground attack aircraft. So let me see if I can acquire... I'm gonna go ahead and attack this dot right here. Lasers on. Fire. We'll fire everything we have. Hopefully we can kill it. Alright, pulling up. Throwing out flare. Okay, uh, there's a lot of AAA coming up. Yep, he's on fire. I can see he's on fire. Yeah, so that was a vehicle. So, the SC-25 is not a bad ground attack vehicle, but it's just, it's, it's lacking. It's lacking way behind for this modern day age. It's, I guess, something like an F-16 or an F-18 or an A-10C. Okay, so uh, I've expanded my bombs as well as my heat rockets. I only have a pair. Okay, transmission coming in. We're under attack by enemy uh, foot mobiles from the south, one kilometer away. Danger close, repeat danger close. Marked by red smoke, copy that. So those are the friendly forces that have been uh, besieged basically in this area by the rebels. And we need to go and help them out. So that was part of the uh, rebels attack, I guess. So the main force was to attack at a certain time. We went ahead and disrupted that, but uh, their diversionary attack is still ongoing, I'm guessing. So their plan was probably to attack the friendly forces on a few different sides, catch them off guard. 
but we went ahead and then uh, thwarted that attack. So those are probably enemy infantry, but I have, as I said, in, the, in these 1980s aircraft, there's no way to visually identify an individual person on the ground. So that red smoke marks the enemy position where they were two minutes ago or five minutes ago, whatever. So they're anywhere, they could be like anywhere from two to 300 meters away. So I'm just gonna roll in on a 25, 30 degree dive. I'm gonna unload with my 80 millimeter uh, fragmentation uh, anti-personnel uh, rockets. So I'm just gonna go ahead and guess where they are. I'm just gonna go ahead and aim off from that red smoke right here. Okay, I can see friendlies engaging them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit their uh, their positions that they're shooting. Hopefully that that uh, has hit the infantry, enemy uh, militia, insurgent infantry. Okay, we're getting locked. Maybe by friendlies. Let's just go ahead and dump some uh, flare just in case. The insurgents could have man pads. Oh, there we go. Friendlies uh, underground, engaging uh, that hostile force. Let's continue to uh, throw flare. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how effective uh, our strike was, but hopefully those uh, f anti personal fragmenting rounds the, from the rockets did something, but I don't see anybody. Now, as I was saying, this is the difference, huge difference in the, uh, in the modern times with a SU-25 against an A-10C Warthog. The A-10C could pick up those guys with thermals from miles and miles away, from like 30, 40 miles away, and be able to put down a precision weapon amongst the enemy troops in close proximity to friendlies with no problem, day and night, regardless of weather. But in the SU-25, there's no way to do that kind of a uh, mission. So I don't see anybody down there. Those are the friendlies. Those uh, that group of housing is the is the friendlies. Okay, transmission coming in. JTAC, we're under attack from the north. Same thing. Danger close. One kilometer. All right, there we go. Marked by smoke. So we're in a perfect position. Okay, there we go. We can see ground friendly ground troops attacking, firing on those guys. So let's go ahead and roll in. But we got to remember, even if we're excited and we want to go ahead and attack, we need to still need to take care of ourselves and fly the aircraft as best as we can. So we're going to go ahead and uh, throttle back, laser on, anti-personnel rocket selected. I'm just going to go ahead and attack where, do where the friendlies are shooting. There we go. Hopefully that, uh, that does the job. I'm just going to continue uh, to dispense flare. There we go, I can see uh, friendly shooting again. Okay, getting locked again. Yeah, there's a lot of shooting from the friendlies onto that hillside.
So that's about it in terms of uh, anti-personnel rockets, amount of rockets. So the only two weapons that I have left to engage anything with are the two S25Ls. Those are very similar to the S25 downfire rockets, except they're laser guided. They're basically laser guided uh, missiles with a uh, quite a hefty payload, a warhead, but a, uh, a short, relatively short range. I don't see anything down there, and there's nothing that I could do unless maybe I could fire an S25 at them, S25 uh, missile. But that's probably better used against uh, some of those armored targets in the original strike uh, point. Now, speaking of the original strike point, first of all, where's my wingman? I, I'm, I didn't hear him eject. I didn't. I didn't see him crash anywhere. I don't see any burning wrecks anywhere. So. Those are the hostiles, the original position that we were attacking. Now again, I, I, there's no way for me to be able to identify anything here. They all look like trees. They're the same color as the trees as well. So, but I think I can see two tanks. So let me go ahead and uh, set up in a uh, long attack pattern. Okay guys, so I think I've locked on to somebody. I think it's a tank, I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fire as soon as we're in range. There we go, pickle. A rifle, I should say. <laughs> rifle. S25L. Okay, we're getting shot at by AAA. There you go, Shack. Shack 1T55. At least I think it was a T55. Now we're just gonna have to uh, dispense flare and just jink. Keep jinking. If I don't want to end up like my uh, wingman. Right, I'm gonna go back around and re-attack. So with these S25Ls or the uh, KH-29s and everything, KH-25s, you need to trim out the aircraft really well, otherwise you're going to have a really rough ground stabilizing lock. So I'm trying to lock that kind of green spec right there. Let's go ahead and uh, rifle. And as you guys can see, the, the S25Ls have a very, very short range. We're within striking distance uh, of the AAA. So let's go ahead and jink. Drop a lot of flare. And hopefully we won't end up uh, like a wingman. Now it's really important to be unpredictable if you want trying to run away from AAA. Okay guys, so uh, I've expanded all my uh, munitions, so the only thing that I have left is the uh, internal twin barrel 30mm uh, gun. So we can go ahead and, uh, and jettison the rockets, the missile pods and everything, so... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and roll in on this uh, anti-aircraft uh, gun pit. I'm going to do this for my wingman, but I, I have a feeling that I'm going to get shot down, so I'm going to have to be really careful. Just lining up. 
There we go, we're in range, firing. Two bursts, three bursts. Alright, pull out, we'll pull out. Alright, JTAC, transmission coming in from JTAC. Alright, AAA coming up. Okay, so we're cleared to RTB. So we're done here. Nice. So we, 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 we're done here. More AAA coming up. I have a feeling that I'm going to get shot down by AAA, but I want to do one more pass, one more gun run on that uh, AAA pit. This is for my wingman, but at the same time, I don't want to end up like my wingman. I'm not sure what happened to him. He's probably MIA, missing in action. So let's go ahead and do roll in and do one last uh, gun run on this uh, ZSU-23 gun pit. So lasers on, just lighting up, there he is, and we're, we're, we're good to fire, there we go, one burst, two, three, four, hopefully that gets him, he should be dead, let's see, nope, he's still alive, he's not burning, he's, in fact he's shooting at me, <laughs> Okay guys, so here we are, back at the airfield. Sad day, no wingman. Hopefully he's okay, he's ejected on friendly uh, territory. But anyway, here we are. Uh, I'm gonna try and land the SU-25A. Now if you guys watched the previous video, uh, I have to uh, make up for the previous video guys. I have to uh, do a good landing, hopefully. <laughs> that was a horrific landing on the first one. But hey, my excuse is that I haven't flown the SU-25A in about a couple of years, so so um, this is Shiraz International Airport. Now I, I did the uh, um, F-18 AOA landing here. I think it was two years ago now. So we got we uh, we're gonna go ahead and try and attempt to land the SU-25 here and not crash. So okay, our objective is to stay at 600, 600 uh, meters above the ground, and get our speed just to about 300 kilometers an hour below that yellow mark then we can go ahead and drop the landing gear and drop flaps now as soon as we drop landing gear I want you guys to have a look at the uh, the AOA it's gonna jump because the nose of the aircraft is gonna balloon and the landing gear the undercarriage is going to increase drag on the aircraft slow us down even more now if you're not careful with that have a look watch this Watch, watch the, watch the AOA. There we go. See, I controlled it. Otherwise, we would have stalled really, really badly. So that's another lesson for you uh, new virtual pilots out there. When you drop in flaps and you drop in landing gear, be prepared for the aircraft to slow down significantly, as well as the nose to balloon. So you gotta retrim. Now, remember what I said. You gotta, you gotta fix the power first. Set the power setting, then trim. So now we're gonna go ahead and descend a little bit. But we want to keep our speed at around 300 kilometers an hour. Now we're going to do a uh, left-hand turn uh, to base and to final. Now on final we want to be about 150 meters off the ground or so. So with looking over our shoulder, having a look at the runway, our speed has just dropped below 300. Now with this aircraft, it's it's the classic aircraft. It's no HUDs, nothing like that. You have to look at the speed uh, speed dial to know how fast you are, to how high how high you are. But that's not a problem, really. The only problem in the SU-25 is uh, acquisition of ground targets. 
accurate accusation all weather uh, of ground targets in all weather conditions. All right, let's go ahead and turn in. Now we want to increase power. So as soon as I turn in, I'm going to increase power so that I don't uh, drop speed. I want to go ahead and control my rate of descent too. I just don't want to just let that unload the stick and let it uh, drop all the way. So we're going to go ahead and line up with the uh, runway as best as we can. That's runway 29, I believe. So now I'm going to have to pop uh, air brakes because we we're getting a little too fast and retard or throttles. Just trying to see that uh, runway as well as the uh, airspeed. There we go. It should be a nice landing. <laughs> this should make up for the uh, horrendous landing that I did in the first one, guys. Alright, maintaining 300. Now, I don't know the exact landing speed and approach speed in the SU-25, so I'm being a little cautious. I don't want to stall the aircraft out. Okay, thank you. That, uh, that made me jump. <laughs> okay. 90 meters, 80 meters, 70. We're going to try and aim for the uh, center to the left of the runway. We're going to flare right at the end. So flaring is cutting the aircraft's rate of descent. So basically you kind of stole onto the runway. There we go. There we go. That's it. Wheels of touchdown. Now we're going to let it roll. We're going to let it roll a little bit. And then we're going to deploy the parachute. So watch the speed. As soon as I deploy the parachutes, speed is going to get reduced like crazy. There we go. See that? Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's about it for this second mission of the Rebel Strike campaign mission here in the uh, SC-25A in DCS World. Thank you very much for joining me. And as always, guys, I hope that my videos, whatever they are, they bring you guys some sort of uh, entertainment during these difficult times. Remember to stay safe. Thank you very much for joining me, and I always appreciate your company. Now, if you guys haven't uh, uh, subscribed, please uh, subscribe if you like to see more of these contents. And if you haven't left a like, please do so. I appreciate that greatly. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, shut down the jet. And that'll be the end of this video. So you guys can expect uh, one DCS video uh, at least once a week. If things go according to plan. So once a week, Mondays or Tuesdays, you can have one DCS video on this uh, channel. So thank you so much for joining me. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, bye-bye.